Hello, and welcome to Mallet's Place TV. I'm your host, Jason Mallet Man Taylor. I'm also a jazz recording artist that had the honors of being the mentor, uh, being mentored by the late great jazz legend Lionel Hampton. I'm also the founder and CEO of Mallet Records, and our mission is to keep real music alive. Mallet Records Incorporated supports Mallet's Place TV in trying to make a difference in keeping real music alive. This actual program is going to be cultural, educational, and a whole lot of fun. We're going to have some great guests on the TV uh, of various ages that perform on different types of instruments and to help to make a difference in keeping real entertainment and real music strong and powerful. So, if I were you, I'd sit back, get comfortable, because you're watching Mallet's Place TV.
Yeah, that was, uh, that was, uh, I think that was Maliban. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much the actual point we try to make with Malice Plays TV. That's where the Malice come in, for those of you not familiar with um, the world of Malice. Uh, at this particular time, I'd like to introduce you to our co-host and also the VP of Marketing for Mallet Records Incorporated. I'd like to introduce uh, Eric Lipsy. Eric Lipsy, how you doing, guy? Fine, and yourself? How's everything? All right. I'm glad that you can be on this great um, educational program uh, that's helping to make a difference for the future of real music. I uh, just wanted the, you to let the audience know a little bit about uh, your experience in the world of entertainment. Well, you know, Ray, uh, it's been 40 years of being in the entertainment music business, and it just so happened that I just started out playing an instrument. And man, it was just uh, one of those things that, you know, instruments are great because one, it develops your personal development as well as discipline. I started up playing the trumpet. Really? Yeah. Wow. You know, and from trumpet led me, and I think I started about the sixth grade. Wow. Man, it was just fantastic. Uh, wow. Playing an instrument and then leading up into doing uh, marketing, promotion, and being part of this Ballet Place TV. And it's just one fantastic year after another. And things were happening as far as artist development and doing bigger and better things. You just have to believe in your dream and continue to make it happen for yourself. But don't give up your dream and stay focused. Right. Focus is real important. Right. You're absolutely right. Talking about focus, um, you know, uh, actually, this is our second program here that we're actually, you know, shooting, promoting uh, instruments. Uh, our previous show, we promoted the uh, actual vibraphone. And uh, now, basically, uh, this show is promoting the bass guitar. You know, the bass guitar, you know, from basically, I guess, the basis of what is a bass? What is bass, you know? And I know from the dictionary term, I know it's kind of like a low-pitched tone. And it's the like the tone in a, a, a low, the lowest register of an instrument, but basically we're just trying to get to that bass guitar itself. Um, and I know that for some of you viewers familiar with the world of uh, uh, live music, there are some various bass players that I'm familiar with, which I hope you guys are too. Like we have uh, what uh, Will Lee from the, the, the David Letterman show. Uh, we got Stanley Clark, right? They used to play with, uh, with Return to Forever, and uh, let me see, uh, George Devivier. He used to play with Lionel Hampton and, and Miles Davis a while ago. You know, something about bass, and bass, you know, you got to, it's real low. Right. And when it comes down to low, the person that comes to my mind is, you know, Nathan E. Oh, Nathan E. Yeah, yeah he's, you know, he's uh, the bass, you know, also, you know, it's not they associated with basement, but this bass goes by the name of a guy named Ray Brown. Are you oh, familiar yeah. with Ray Brown? Ray Brown, a veteran. Yeah, he was, uh, he was, a matter of fact, he was, uh, he was married to Ella. Ella. Yeah, we got that uh, Ella footage uh, somewhere out there. Take a look there. It was my first year in high school, and she came to town to the, uh, uh, the school with Lionel Hampton, and <laughs> Lionel danced on the, on the bass drum till it broke. He broke it. I will never forget it. That was my first time to see Ella. become very friendly with Hank Jones and the, the trio I was actually replacing Hank Jones at that moment that they shot that film. Ella was a master. She stood before her husband the great Ray Brown and scattered right in his face. A man with great humility. I wouldn't be able to do that. Stand in the bass player's face and scat what he plays. They are great these musicians. But I know that Ella was a musician. That's why she could scat the way she did. On December 10th, 1947, Ella married bassist Ray Brown in Youngstown, Ohio. 
He became her manager as well. The marriage didn't last long, but the two remained friends and constant musical partners throughout Ella's life. It was a beautiful one while it lasted. We were both going different ways. And uh, we never saw each other because uh, he was here and I was there. And unfortunately, we never really got a chance to really have, for, for, you know, the first three years was wonderful because he's a wonderful person. I loved Ella uh, all of her life because uh, to me, uh, I got to know her when she was married to uh, Ray Brown, and that seemed to me, as a friend, to be a very happy time for her. Sweet and lovely lady, be good. Oh, lady, be good. Yeah, and that was the education of, of a lifetime, which you got to see there. And now we're bringing it up to current. We have two great, great cats in the house today. You know, we have on uh, on guitar, we have my man Gabriel Guzman. How you yeah. doing? How you doing, Gabe? I'm doing good. You doing good? Okay, good. And then on bass guitar, we have Steve Siobhan. How you doing, Steve? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good, man. I'm just glad to see you guys here and helping to make history repeat itself over and over again because without you guys, you know, it really would be a, a issue, I think, my opinion. Oh, it's good to um, be here. Thanks, man. I just wanted to ask you a question. Steve, uh, how did you become interested in the bass guitar? Well, back in the sixth grade, two friends of mine were trying to start a band. And every day when I came into school, they said we need a bassist. Right. And eventually I took the hit, and I got myself a bass, and I learned to play. Uh, can you play us two scales, man? Just for the viewers, you know. Major scale? Not bad. Okay, all right, all right. So let me just go. Let me ask you a question. How long um how long have you been playing the bass? I've been playing the bass for about a year and a half now. And who's your favorite bass player? My favorite bass player is probably Billy Sheehan. He plays with Steve Vai a lot. And, you know, I don't want to leave you out, man, because, you, you know, you're part of the crew. Eh? You know, even though we're talking about bass, you know. <laughs> Listen, Steve, how long, how, Gabriel, how long have you been playing guitar? I've been playing about uh, two years. Two years? Yeah. And who's your favorite guitar player? The one and only Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix. Now, I know you guys out there in the audience know about Jimi Hendrix. If you don't know about Jimi Hendrix, something's wrong. Yeah. All right, well, at this time, I don't want to hold you guys up much. I just thought maybe you can please the audience by giving them a selection that I'm sure that everybody would enjoy. And uh, what's the name of the, the, the selection you guys are about to play? Uh, it's called Killing Floor, and it's by Howlin' Wolf. Yeah, he's a blues player. Blues player? Yeah. Well, we need some blues right about now. Not All too right. much blues, but just to give a little appetizer. All right. All right. All right? Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Gabriel Guzman and Steve Siobhan. Come on.
All right, all right. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Pretty good, huh? Come on, come on, come on, give us some love. Would you guys uh, like to play another show selection for the audience and let them, know, you know, get a little more feel for what you guys are, you know, doing right now? Yeah. What's the, what's the next song gonna be? I'll just give us a minute to figure that out. A minute, but we only got like, uh, you know, what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay, but well in the meantime, while you guys are deciding, I need you to ask you one more question, please. Sure. That behind you. Uh, let me get let me get that for you there. What's the difference? Just so the viewers know, this is a bass guitar too, isn't it? What is the difference between the bass guitar that you're playing there and this the bass guitar you're playing here? What what is it? What is the difference? This here is an electric bass. It's a uh, Fender. This is pretty much the cheapest bass you can get anywhere. Okay. Okay. It's a starter bass. Okay. And this is an acoustic bass. It's Ibanez. A little bit nicer. The only real difference is with an electric bass, you normally play out of an amp and you get a better sound with it. But with an acoustic bass, you don't need the amp. It's not as loud and you probably wouldn't use it when you're playing somewhere, but it feels a lot better when you play it. So what do you recommend for the viewers out there that are just starting out on a bass guitar? and they go home to their parents, or even the parents, you know, want to treat themselves to a bass guitar. What would you recommend telling them uh, the, best, the best bass to, to use? I would recommend just to get a Fender to start off, Fender electric bass, and then as you get better, you find bigger and better things. Okay. Well, I think that's very educational. I appreciate the information. All right, let's do a little short number if that's uh, okay with you, and uh, we'll keep it rolling, huh? All right. Let me grab the bass. Thanks. Okay. Let it roll, baby. Right, all right. I like that, man. Way to go, man. Thanks a lot, guys. Great having you on the show. Good luck to you. And like Thank I said, we you really support Keeping Music Alive, and I hope the viewers get the opportunity, too. Now, at this particular time, we'd like to give you an extra special treat that we have in the house. Um, and uh, we're just going right, to slide over there, OK? Um, I'd like to introduce you to a new and upcoming star. Hello, Demi. Just please uh, put your hands up for Demi George. Demi George, huh? Demi George. All right, so Demi, um, we know you are, well, I know, but let the viewers know, where do you live? New Jersey, Morristown. Morristown, New Jersey. And how long have you been playing? About six years. Six years. And now you're going to give the people a little appetizer of you at work <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a selection, is that right? Yeah. Okay. And we just want the viewers to know that, like I said, yes, we have promoted, we are promoting the bass guitar at this particular time, but I just want you to know that we're trying to keep real music alive. And this is just an appetizer of what the future is all about. We have the beautiful Demi, Demi, Demi George is about to play a great selection for you. So please enjoy.
Hey. Thank you, Demi. Thank you, Demi. Demi, Demi. She's on her way. She's on her way. So you guys out there, watch out. Watch out. All right. Okay. Oh, I got to take the mic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming right over. I'm coming right over. I got to get my little working shoes going. <laughs> so let me ask you a question, Demi. What got you into the keyboard? I don't know. I just started playing when I was little. I just got on here. It was wooden then, but it's not there anymore. Did you did did somebody inspire you to make you want to play you know play music at all? Or? Yeah, my mom did. Yeah. Your mom used to play keyboards. Yeah, she doesn't play that much anymore. Well, that's a great inspiration. That's important. You got to realize that everybody gets inspired. They look up to someone, and it's something that always motivates you. You know, see somebody that that you appreciate or plays it plays the instrument good. I gather, right? Or someone that you cherish. You know, and. And I guess one plus one equals two, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, keep up the good work, Demi. And I hope to have you back on my show again if you if you would like to come. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Okay, come on. Give, give a round of applause for Demi, huh? Come on. Well, well, come back over here to my co-host. How you doing? Come on. Come on over here. Come on over here. I'm going to mm -hmm. talk to you for a minute there. Listen, um, you know, we're coming down to the end of our show, but I just thought that it was important for you as a co-host. I mean, you got so, so many ideas. I want you to share with the audience some of your your ideas there, you know? Well, one thing before we close out, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge the parents that brought out the kids. I'd like to acknowledge Chrissy, Christine, that's over there behind the camera for bringing out the boys. And they're available for all and any type of event that you may have in the area. They're happy to come out, contact Chrissy. And also, we'd like to thank David George, all the way from New that's Jersey, that. come on out for his daughter, very talented young lady, mm -hmm. up and coming. And look, if, you, if the kids have futures, hey, this is a place to expose your future. We make all your dreams come true right here at Mallet Place. I agree with TV. that. TV! <laughs> <laughs> and also I, like to, also, I like to thank my producers, you know, uh, David, David Lyle. We call him Cool Dad. You know, he's, he's really worked hard with Kenny, uh, Kenny Graham, for making this possible as well. It, it takes a team to win. You know, we have Sherry Rogowski, you know, from uh, photographer Mallet Records. It's a great bunch of people that have been very supportive. And uh, please keep in mind that if you want to be able to support Mallet Records, uh, I mean Mallet's Place TV, or Mallet Records, either one, but this is Mallet's Place TV, uh, please look up, uh, look, at, uh, look us up at www.malletsplace.com. And uh, let's keep real music alive. Well, uh, Mallet, before we go, I just got to ask you this question. Why? Who's your favorite bass player, man? My favorite bass player? Oh, yeah. My Come on, you got to tell the people, like, who, who, who do you like the most? My favorite bass yeah. player? Yeah. I like Stanley Clark. Oh, yeah. What, yeah. what about Maurice White? You don't like Maurice White? Oh, I like Maurice oh, White. Oh, yeah. Too. Okay. How about Bootsy Collins? You remember back in the day? Yeah. Well, you know what? Most important is that <laughs> every one of them played an instrument. Yeah. It's important to keep real music alive. But you know something? You got to keep practice. Practice right. and practice. Well, That's the key. We're now coming down to the end of our show. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I certainly did. And please keep in mind, keep real music alive by supporting Mallet's Place TV. Take care, you guys.